Hi. Good afternoon. My name is Mary Andrew Gray. My capstone is about hospice nurse self-care. Uh, I've been privileged to be in the field of end-of-life care for 14 years, starting out at Francis House in the city, which is a home for the terminally ill, and then I work there and also at the hospice of, Cent of Central New York. So I've been um, able to take care of patients of all types of backgrounds and disease processes and their families to help them through the journey to um, dying and ultimately death. It's in doing that work that I noticed that there was some disparity in the care that the nurses who care for those patients actually get. Um, Self-care of the hospice nurse is very important because we need it to be able to do the work that we do every day. Um, the hospice that I work in has no uh, current program in place for hospice for self-care for nurses at all. Um, so, there goes my product. During this presentation, the learner will be able to define key terms, define the PICO statement, discuss relative literature, and discuss recommendations. Do you want the clicker? Uh, yeah. Do you want that clicker? The clicker will Or just, if you just want that arrow, it should go. Key terms. Self-care is care of a person as a whole, care of the body, mind, and spirit. Self-care deficits stem from poor care of the body, mind, and spirit, in addition to some work-related issues. Um, Self-care deficits can be anything from insomnia, depression, alcohol, and drug abuse issues. Um, it can be related to a person's own spiritual um, connection, a loss of interest. It can lead to isolation. Um, it can lead to job turnover and uh, issues with relationships in one's own family. Burnout is everyday stressors that multiply over time that affect the person as a whole. And compassion fatigue is an exhaustion that a person can feel over time when caring for people who are physically and emotionally distress the majority of the time. As an overview, hospice nurses deal with death and dying die on a daily basis, which may lead to setting aside their own self-care needs. In doing so, they may develop self-care deficits. Um, education is needed to help a nurse understand what self-care is and to recognize their own self-care needs. In doing so, there is a need for ongoing, first primary education and then ongoing education of resource provision so that nurses are better able to take care of themselves. As a background, death and dying are taboo subjects in society. People are just starting to have conversations about end-of-life wishes. Uh, the field of hospice care in itself is relatively new. England organized the first hospice in 1948, and the first hospice in the United States was established in Connecticut back in the 70s. Hospice care is now in the home, settings in hospitals, skilled nursing facilities. And research into hospice care is in its infancy when compared to other arenas of nursing. Hospice care as a whole needs to be understood as well as the impact of that care on the nurses. My population is hospice nurses. My intervention is self-care education compared to no self-care education. The outcome is to improve self-care practices, increase job satisfaction, and longevity within the field. The research question is, do hospice nurses who receive self-care education 
have better self-care practices, increased job satisfaction and longevity with the community. I used Kurt Lewin change theory, frozen, unfrozen, and refreeze. At first, um, hospice nurses may be aware, unaware of their own self-care needs in their busy day-to-day -day work and often high acuity and caseloads. Self-care deficits may exist. Through education, the nurse would acknowledge the need to change. Education resources would be provided. And then the refree stage would be a commitment to the nurse's own self-care and use of resources and self-care education on an ongoing basis to help better their own care. I use the search engines as outlined up here. Hospice nurse, burnout, compassion fatigue, end of life care, and job related stressors were my keywords. Out of 40 articles, I reviewed seven that directly related to my search terms. As far as a review of literature, I was able to pick out seven articles, well, six of the seven that related directly to hospice nurses. I had a really hard time finding articles in general that related to hospice nurses. Nursing in general was talked about, but not specifically hospice nurses. So I looked at articles that dealt with, with self-care and the terms of how do nurses cope. Compassion, fatigue, and burnout, like we defined earlier. Stress and depression among those nurses also. The strength of the evidence is outlined here. The frustrating piece of my research was that most of it was qualitative because it's so much so I it's infancy. We need to really um, understand the terms that go along with hospice care and hospice nursing first before we can do any quantitative type studies. So the strengths of the literature, they did focus on understanding hospice care and its effect on the nurse. Provided uh, comprehension a comprehensive definition of terms such as compassion, fatigue, and burden. And it provided a backbone from which to grow mm -hmm. research going forward. Weaknesses were small, convenient sized samples. Most research was done in other countries, which I found very interesting. And little literature existed in quantitative nature, which I expressed before. Clinical repellent. Relevance. The importance of self care for the hospice nurse is it's vital to the nurse's own health. Increased job satisfaction and longevity in the field. Well being of the nurse enhances care of the patient and family. And increased longevity in the field will help stop part of the global nursing shortage. As the population ages, <coughs> uh, we will need qualified end of life care. Nurses. In summary, further hospice nurse self care research and educational program and resource development is needed. Hospice nurses need to be given an outlet for grief and feelings in order to promote their own well being. And the hospice nurse self care is vital to the nurses' own health, job satisfaction, and longevity in the field, and ultimately ultimately patient family care. Research, education, and resource development are important aspects of understanding that care. Any questions? I talked really fast, so